So hello everyone, thank you for being here. So my name is Charlotte Onibeli and I will pre be presenting the People's Index today to you. Success. What does it truly mean? Why are certain countries considered to be successful? Why are some not? How can success be measured in an effective way? Now let me start by asking you a simple question. Who in this room thinks that um, the UK is a successful country? Not in any specific domain or activity, but rather generally. Who thinks the UK is a successful country? Okay, interesting. And uh, who thinks it's not? Okay. So um, I want to start by showing you this graph, which shows the GDP per capita rate between 1820 and 2018. We've seen that the world encountered a tremendous economic growth since the 1950s, making the world approximately seven times richer today than it was in 1820. Uh, GDP, gross domestic product, is considered to be the um, leading indicator to determine economic success. But GDP m measures the monetary value of all the goods and services produced within a year in a specific economy. However, aren't there more dimensions to it Shouldn't we also take into consideration how um, our society is doing, how the environment is doing? Because at the current state of things, um, an increase in GDP represents country success, but a decrease in GDP or a country having low rates in GDP is considered a country that is unsuccessful. So let me start by uh, showing you here this um, picture, inequality. A dimension that GDP completely misses out. This is Sao Paulo, Brazil, a residential area where wealth inequalities are striking. To give you a bit more numerical data on this, uh, the bottom 50% um, in society in 2021 only held 8.5% 8 8 of the world's income, whereas the top 10% of uh, the world held 52% of the world's income. Even more striking are wealth inequalities. Only 2% of the world's wealth is held by the bottom 50% of our society, whereas the top 10% held have 76%. Uh, so yeah, this is just to show you here the dimension of inequality, which indeed, GDP rose living standards, but for whom? So this is another example I'd like to show you, the alarming climate crisis. We can see that Rising CO2 emissions are rising um, at the global scale. Climate-driven displacements are getting more and more frequent. Fires, floods, all of this are becoming yearly events uh, because of the climate crisis. Checking reality. This is why we're here today. Que uh, checking reality is questioning the, what is assumed to be the normal state of things. I'm standing here today in front of you to question what is assumed to be the normal or the real state of country success. So yeah, how can we measure success in a way that puts people first, that includes the three sustainability dimensions and that can be applied to policies effectively? So last year, before presenting you the People's Index, I was living in the Le Netherlands, riding my bike on a sunny Thursday afternoon, thinking about the essay I had to write entitled the future of globalization. Yes. How should the future of globalization look like? Um, so this is how I came up with the People's Index. The People's Index is an acronym encompassing seven dimensions to measure how people are doing in a society. So P stands for prosperity, E for environmental pre preservation, O for overall income equality, C for political freedom, L for labor rights, E for education, and F for social health. So uh, the People's Index is calculated by the arithmetical average of these dimensions, where um, P is um, measured through GDP per capita. GDP is an important measurement. It takes into account the monetary value of our society, but it should be considered as one out of seven dimensions, should be supplemented by indicators that measure the society, well-being, the education, the inequalities, but also the environment. So
So this is why the environmental preservation index is uh, calculated by ecological footprint per capita, overall income inequality through the Gini index, political freedom through the democracy index, labor rights through the global rights index, education through the education index, social health through life expectancy. Yeah, we live in a world of metrics in which political choices and policy, policies are determined based on what is measured. So this is why measuring our success is so important. When measuring a wrong element, policymakers will get misinformed about the current problems uh, a society currently has. So measuring the wrong element will provide wrong information where policymakers will tackle the wrong policies and address the wrong problems. So this is why um, the People's Index has been invented, to really provide for a new innovative framework that encompasses more dimensions than the economy. Uh, this thought draws back on the eudaimonia concept from the old Aristotelian um, thought, saying that the highest human good in society is um, a person's happiness, meaning that every single human action is dedicated to its personal well-being. How can I phrase that now in a <laughs> nicer way? So for example, why do we go to universities? To have a nice job. Why do we want to have a nice job? To have a good salary in the end. Why do we want to have a good salary? To buy a nice house. Why do we want a house? To spend some nice time with our friends and family. Every single human action is determined as its finality to be happy. So why don't we put this as our first priority and as our success factors? So to give you a more concrete example um, of my own research when I applied the, G uh, the People's Index to South Korea and the European Union. Let me take you to scenario one, where the European Union and the South Korean GDP indeed increased from 2011 to 2021. Here, in both cases, both countries are successful. However, in terms of peoples, so the People's Index of South Korea and the European Union actually decreased between 2011 to 2019. Only by approximately 2%, but it decreased. So in terms of people's index and people's dimensions, both countries were unsuccessful because their people's well-being decreased by 2% approximately. Whereas in terms of the economy and their, their global wealth, um, it increased. So this is just to show you that really measuring success in a different way through different lenses can really yeah, change outcomes on how a society is perceived. Yes, other metrics do exist, of course, such as the Human Development Index, the Better Life Index, or the Happy Planet Index. However, these metrics are either not complete, not concise, or not objective. So for example, the Human De uh, Development Index takes indeed into account the economy, uh, social health and education. However, I believe that disregarding the climate crisis, um, inequalities, is not sufficient. So it is lacking in having a bit more dimension to it. For example, the Better Life Index is complete and objective. However, in, it encompasses 80 parameters, which is not very concise and not easy to measure uh, and to look at for policymakers. And finally, for example, the Happy Planet Index is um, not complete, but it's concise and not objective, meaning that, for example, the Happy Planet Index surveys a certain population on its state of well-being. Hello, are you happy today? Yeah, but happiness can de depend from one day to another. Asking a person about its happiness is subjective. So for example, if you just fell in love today, you might be super happy, but if it's a rainy Thursday uh, when you had some troubles at work, you might be unhappy. So that's why the people that's where the people's index comes in. It tries to be a bit more complete than the human development index by encountering the, uh, the environment, inequalities, labor rights, but also staying concise in a way that people uh, and policymakers can keep track of the indicators and also objective because each of their uh, parameters is um, determined in an objective way and cannot depend from one day to another. So yeah, um, as with all the metrics, it's important to know its origins. 
the people's index has been invented by me, a young <laughs> white European girl born and raised in Western Europe. Um, and these seven match, uh, dimensions have been uh, yeah, created according to my values and what I think is just. But I'm standing here to say that the people's index shouldn't be imposed on anyone. Every community, every country has its own subjectivities and needs. And this index should rather be seen as food for thought, as an alternative framework, a framework policymakers can use but shouldn't be forced to use. Because according to me, Charlotte, <laughs> this is a more just way to look at a country's success. So finally, the COVID-19 pandemic had, has shown that people, firms and state had an incredible ability to acclimate and reinvent themselves. So placing the focus on people rather than profits would change contemporary economic thinking. What we need is not a deglobalization, but a reglobalization, driven by human and planet's well-being. And this starts by adapting what we measure so that better and fairer policies can be developed. Thank you.